offensive line is my thing for this summer. It is my focal point for what would be the most pivotal factor possible for the Steelers entering the 2021 season. And within that, I am all about Zach Banner bringing it together. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates right where you found this. Yesterday concluded the Steelers' first week of OTAs. Days 1, 2, and 3 were Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, respectively. As always, nothing of consequence was achieved, you know, in terms of, who oh, looked good. There's never anything like that. But what you're doing with OTAs is you're paying attention to who are guys who were injured and on their way back, to what degree are they participating, Who's showing up? Who's looking enthusiastic among the veterans? Who's looking like they've got all kinds of extra energy? And then, maybe more than anything, it's about listening. It's about hearing what they have to say. And that's doubly true when it comes to someone like Banner. Because Banner, he talks a lot, and he's extremely visible as well as being audible in any setting. I'm trying to find ways to say this graciously, big guy, <laughs> but that's that's the way I'm portraying it here. But he's also a, a, a truth teller. Sometimes I think to a fault. He's not particularly careful with what he says, and that's also part of his personality arguably to be appreciated. So when it was his turn to meet with the media yesterday after the OTA session, I thought it was going to be telling to hear what he had to say about this group of offensive linemen, of which he's now not just a fringe guy, but a significant component. And he did not disappoint. You'll never be able to fill a gap that 53 left. No one will. Um, It's just because he's, he's his own guy and he was a center, right? That come that that's, that's a different, uh, that's, that's a whole different, you know, book, but at the same time, it's not almost like creating a new environment. It's taking all the great things from it, right. From being here, Dave DeCastro has been here even longer. Um, those experiences, and I mean, come on, man, we're, we're talking, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people want to say a lot of bad things about us right now, and that's okay. But at the same time, um, a couple of years ago, we were known as the best offensive line in the league. How do you take those things that they passed on and how do you create it in your own way? And that's, that, that will be something that we'll have to continue to fill out for the summer, but I think we found it and we're working really, really hard. Uh, you know, even though I mentioned the outside voices, um, that's only because of, you know, how interactive I am on social media and some of the other guys are like, you can't just, you just can't help but to be tweeted at by somebody. But when I tell you that when we walk, wait, when I wake up, like, that's the last thing I'm thinking about. That's the last thing our guys are thinking about. We never, we hardly ever even talk about it. Only time we'll talk about it is if we, you know, loaf on a play or we loaf on something and we look at each other and and pick each other up and and remind each other about that chip on our shoulder because we want that. Um, Like I said, some people are scared of that pressure, but we welcome it. See, that's what I want to hear. This is the stuff I'm talking about. This offensive line isn't technically starting from scratch the way it seems to get painted in a lot of corners, particularly with the national types who aren't around the team. This is a group that's gifted and hungry, but also has, as you heard Banner suggest, the benefit of lineage. No one is going to replace Marquise. 
It'd be crazy and it'd be insulting to think otherwise. But they all listened to Marquise. They all learned from him. They learned from Alejandro Villanueva. They learned from Ramon Foster. Before that, they learned from Marcus Gilbert. They learned from guys who'd been out there, who'd, who'd done it, and who had succeeded at it, and who had been, in some cases, Pro Bowl or even All Pro types. Oh, and by the way, they still have David DeCastro to do that. Offensive line is so, so, so very much a position of accumulating knowledge, experience, finding out what works, having what doesn't work get exposed. And if you have a good coach in the Steelers and their people, as you heard Banner uh, point to, very much believe in Adrian Clem more than his predecessor, Sean Surrett, but definitely not more than Mike Munchak, who was just worshipped by everyone on the O-line, veterans and rookies alike. When you have that, you're skipping past a lot of steps. Sure, they're still going to they're going to feel some growing pains. I guarantee you that Chuk Sokorafor's first few games at left tackle are going to involve some adventures and some negative moments. Because when he makes a mistake, unlike anybody else on the field, yeah, you know what's going to happen. And he's going to have to overcome the negativity, the backlash, and everything else, the criticism. And I'm sure that includes when it's completely fair. You still have to overcome it. And he's going to be joined by others in that regard. Banner's going to get beaten on the right side. Kevin Dotson is going to see moves he's never seen in his life at left guard. It's not just going to be the way it was in 2020 when he could ride in as the cavalry and they tell him, hey, just size up the man in front of you and knock him backward. Just do that for us, Kevin. We'll be good. There's going to be a lot more to it this time. But I'm going to repeat this until I am blue in the face. This offensive line is going to have one enormous variable that the one from 2020 didn't. And that is that it's going to have that fire. At least as far as I can see. As far as I can see, you're going to have a minimum of four very hungry individuals looking to prove themselves. And I can only hope that David DeCastro will be part of that meaning in the intangible sense. My respect for the man is through the roof. I believe that he can contribute if he wants to contribute and if he's fully healthy, which he was not early last season, by the way, and maybe not throughout because you don't really get much of a chance to recover at that position in the National Football League. I believe in this group. I am ready to fall on my sword if they fail. And I am definitely not of the mindset that this is the most precarious part of the Steelers roster. I just don't see that. I see an upgrade in the offing. I really do. When we come back, just one question. Back, it's time for just one question, and that's brought to you on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garvin, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp, who filed medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been designated super lawyers, capital S, capital L, for over 15 years. That's a real thing. It's reserved for the top 5% of all attorneys across the Commonwealth. 
LG KG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or call 888-842-5454. Question comes from James Harrison Stare, which is easily the best moniker we've had here in at least a month. And James Harrison Stare is referring to my podcast yesterday in which I praised Dotson for the fun that he shows with his run blocking, the aggressiveness, the, the, the rapidity, really, that he pushes guys back with. And the question here is, do we think that Dave, meaning DeCastro, can get healthy enough with enough left in the tank to have an overall solid interior? And what do you expect from the third rounder this year. Well, all of those things are related because Dotson, DeCastro, and whoever wins the center position is going to have to gel in a raging hurry. The whole group will. And that's one of the reasons that I'm hoping that Kendrick Green, who is that third rounder, can become that player right off the bat. To me, the dream scenario for the Steelers' offensive line is to have B.J. Finney available to back up at both center and left guard. That's the role he filled previously for the Steelers. It's a role he filled extremely well, regardless of which of the two positions he manned. Getting this group in sync first and foremost depends on the instant maturation of green. I'll say again that there's nothing that happens at OTAs that would allow me to say in one direction or the other, how's green looking? No idea. He's there in shorts, snapping a football and not being bumped. We have no idea how these guys are doing other than maybe, you know, like the only positions where you can actually see somebody make an impression one direction or the other at sessions like this are wide receivers because the ball is up in the air and they either come down with it or they don't. I guess to an extent quarterbacks, but even then there's no rush. So I'd love to be able to tell you that green looks great. Just don't know. Just don't know. And you're not going to know until not even mini camp. You're not going to know really until Latrobe and at Latrobe, you'll see it very quickly. That's a different world, especially once they start going into seven on sevens and doing things that look like actual football. I'm hopeful for Green. I'm hopeful based on the Steelers' ability to recognize offensive line talent, and they've done a pretty good job of that. Not great, but a pretty good job of that over the years. And I liked a lot of what I heard from Mike Tomlin, Kevin Colbert, and Adrian Clem when Green was drafted. They see him as a fit for this system, the wide zone blocking scheme, principally if that does in fact get applied under Matt Canada. If Green is that guy, you've now got, though, getting to this dynamic again, you've now got... Dotson, Green, and DeCastro as your three interior guys. And yes, those are the ones who do have to be the most on the same page. At least in the previous scheme. Wide zone blocking, I don't know. I, I can speak to the previous scheme because I've seen it, witnessed it, covered it, interviewed guys about it. In this new one, it's it's hard to say. That That's going to be the best answer that I can I can give you on this because of the variable at center and because of the variable involving the playbook. But to me, the ideal scenario is that green is the starter because I don't see the benefit of, and I hear this a lot, wait till week four, week five, and then he'll win the job. How? By being really good in, you know, practice or, you know, I, I don't get that. If he's good enough, put him in that spot right away. He's not going to get better by week five just by sitting around watching B.J. Finney. If he's good enough, play him. 
Let him get exposed in those other things that I was describing earlier. Figure that out along the way. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers during this first week of OTAs. We will be back with a new episode Monday. Point Park University, in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, they understand there's no substitute for real-world experience and career-building connections. Their innovative curriculum engages students with distinctive experiential learning opportunities. Point Park's pioneering co-op program empowers qualified students to work in full-time, paid positions with their corporate partners while earning college credits. Visit pointpark.edu slash works to learn more. Career ready. That's the point. Point Park University. Your front door, your car, your gym locker, your gun. Safety is a habit. Learn more about how to keep guns safe and secure. Visit projectchildsafe.org.